Blessed Thursday, everyone. Okay, my name is Ellen and I will be your host and moderator for our webinar today. We want to greet all of you who joined us here on Zoom and also on our Facebook page. We are very happy that you can join us today. We always tell you share your insights because we read them and we really appreciate them. And we just want to highlight some of you who sent insights uh, regarding your learnings from our webinars. Uh, we want to call out I hope we hope you're watching today. You said, I am once full of entitlement, but then through God's encounter, I realize and keep on realizing that without God, I'm nothing. All I have is all by God's grace. Ayan, di ba? Ang ganda ng insights niya. Let's uh, read another one from our sister Karen Saking Rodriguez. She said, I learned from the series Life Detox to always... Fix my eyes on God, who is the source of my joy and my strength. I should trust Him with all my heart in good and in bad times and not lean on my own understanding. <laughs> Ayan, nakaka-relate ba kayo? So, we're on our sixth week of our Women to Women uh, webinars on life detox, overcoming toxic realities. This is tied in to our CCF Sunday messages. If you have not watched any of the messages on Sunday, we highly recommend that you go to the CCF's YouTube channel, CCF Main TV, to watch those messages. Today, we're going to talk all about discontentment. So let me introduce to you with no further ado our panelists. So first, let's call on our sister Diana Tanshi. She's the wife and helpmate of CCF founder and senior pastor, Dr. Peter Tanchi. They've been happily married for 47 years. She's mother of five children that she homeschooled. Take note, five children that she homeschooled. And now they're all grown up, married with their own families. And they've carried on that legacy also of homeschooling their own children. And they're all serving the Lord Okay, with Pastor Peter and Ms. Diana. She's a conference speaker, counselor of women and families, mentor, discipler, and Bible teacher. She's the co-author of the book, Motivate, Eight Secrets to Successful Parenting. If you don't have a copy of that book, it's a highly recommended read for all parents out there. The principles are just so uh, powerful and important, impactful. And of course, she's our uh, ministry head, women to women ministry head, Miss Diana Tanchi. Hello. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning to all of you ladies. I'm excited to be here with you. Yes, pretty in pink. Okay, now we have our second panelist. She's born and raised in Baguio City, but has lived in Cavite for the past 28 years. She has both a bachelor's wow. degree and master's degree in psychology from St. Louis University. After college and before going to full-time service in the Lord with her husband, her area of expertise had been on recruitment and executive search. She has been married for almost 33 years now to Pastor Ned Gachico, who is the National Church Planting Director of CCF. They have three adult kids, Kira, who will be with us today also, Pat and Mark. And in the past 23 years, and she said even so in the coming years of her life, she hopes to dedicate her life to serving the Lord Jesus Christ and as a partner to her husband in ministry and as a teacher of the word and a discipler to women. Hi, Miss Bang. How are you today? Welcome to uh, Women to Women. Hi, good morning, everyone. Yes, we look forward to hearing from you. And now let's let's hear from uh, Miss Bang's uh, daughter. She's the eldest of th the three children of uh, Miss Bang and Pastor Ned. She's a creative writer and a reader of all things fiction and nonfiction. I think she takes after her mom, who also loves to read books. Right after she graduated from the university, she worked as a full time campus missionary in Elevate for almost six years. She then decided to make an impact for the Lord in the corporate world. 
and pursued her writing career upon resigning. Currently, she works as a content writer for a top Australian property investing podcast, directly reporting to the owner and founder of the company. Let's welcome Kira Gachrico. Hi, Kira. How are you today? Hi, good morning. Thank you for inviting us. Yes, we are so glad that we are joined today by this wonderful woman and we can't wait to hear from them. But first, okay, especially for the benefit of those of you who have not um, watched yet the message on Destroy Discontented, our brother Edric Mendoza spoke on how to destroy discontent. And Let's just have a quick review. What is discontentment? And we consulted our trusty Google <laughs> on that. Okay, discontent is defined as the lack of satisfaction with one's possession, status, or situation. Okay, so that is the toxic emotion that we will all try to overcome today. And then uh, the framework... Um, basically, the word is boom. Okay, so how we destroy this content, we destroy it with an explosive boom. And B O O M stands for four ways, okay, uh, steps that we can pursue contentment. Okay, so we'll go through that. So the first one is B, okay, so it stands for bang also, <laughs> but B uh, stands for be aware. So uh, we have to be aware of this toxic emotion of discontent. And uh, now I just want to pose this question to our panelists. Um, can you share your own experience with discontent or your insight about uh, what discontent is in your life? Uh, Ms. Ban, since you are starting with the letter B, let's start with you. Okay, Ellen. So maybe I'll just give a brief background about my uh, myself sure. no so that people can understand so when i was uh, i was born actually into a family uh, that belongs to the uh, lower middle income category no and uh, as a young child i experienced not having much and sometimes we just eat rice with soy sauce or bagoong but surprisingly it didn't bother me that much i was i was happy with the way we were but when I entered high school, that's when my eyes were opened to the disparity uh, among the classes no? between the rich and the poor. And uh, I, I, I studied in a, an exclusive uh, girls' high school in Baguio City, and I had schoolmates who were rich and beautiful and popular. They seemed to have everything. And uh, compared to me, my parents had to work hard for my tuition and I experienced um, uh, giving promissory notes during quarterly exams because my parents couldn't uh, pay on time. And then if I compare my baon with the baon of my, my classmates, uh, mine is just a small piece of fried fish or just a few pieces of the cocktail size of, of hot dog. So uh, that's when seeds of discontent sprouted in my heart. And uh, more than that, I think uh, it became so strong when I wanted to be part of the dance group of the school and I, I actually auditioned and I passed it, but I, I noticed that only the tall the beautiful, the popular <laughs> were chosen and those who can afford the costumes. And so began my long time struggle on discontent over my physical looks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it became stronger uh, when, when sometimes my classmates would have withdraw parties no? and they would invite me. And then they would invite also some uh, guys. And uh, I experienced uh, being a wallflower not being chosen uh, for dances, no? And that really hurt a lot uh, for somebody who was in her teenage years. Uh, it made a big uh, impact on me. So as I grew older, uh, my discontent over my looks grew stronger. And uh, um, it was only when I, you know, I received Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. That's when I understood that um, in his eyes, I am just perfect. <laughs> I am beautiful in his eyes. So that's it, uh, Ellen. 
<laughs> yes, I, I I can kind of relate with you because I think I mean most people I think all of us women have uh, at one point in our lives have insecurities also and this made us feel discontent. So thank you, uh, Miss Bang. Let's hear from Kira. Oh, thank you, um, Ate Ellen. So actually, it's uh mine is a different sort of a different struggle. So growing up, uh, by only by God's grace, uh, we were taught to be content with material things. Yeah. So, um, uh, I often by God's grace alone overcame, um, you know, the the temptation to be discontent with what I had. So the the toxic emotion of discontent came from my own physical appearance. It came about when I started comparing how I looked with other girls when I was um, a teenager. So originally, initially, I thought I was okay. I was pretty unique because I looked different from my other typically Filipino-looking class. Um, but then I started to look at the small details. Like I had really small eyes. I had small hands, sweaty hands <laughs> growing up. And so I, I, I often ask the Lord, Lord, why am I not beautiful as the other girls in my class? So um, it came from insecurity and I guess as well as pride, this toxic emotion of this protect because I wanted to not only have quote unquote the brains but also to have the world's beauty standard. So basically it all was rooted on my in my insecurity. Thank you, Kira. And thank you for mentioning also that, you know, the discontent that we have, it has roots. Uh, there, there is a reason why we have discontent. And it's good that in your case, you were able to identify that. So, um, ladies, uh, as we listen to our discussion today, let's also reflect on, on our own situation. Do we have discontent? What's driving that discontent? Okay, so Ms. Diana, can we hear from you? Well, yes, I was really thinking, what was it that was my discontent when I was uh, growing up? One of the things that happened to me is that my father was the U.S. Navy, so we traveled almost every year. So I went to 13 schools before I graduated from high school, uh, and I went to five colleges and universities. So my discontent was I felt that I was damaged by traveling so much and that I was handicapped when it came to making deep friendships. And so I remembered after I came to Christ, I really faced this. Uh, I really faced this discontent. And God reminded me that, Diana, that I made a promise to you that I'm going to use everything to work together for good in your life. And that because of that, you are to give me thanks for what you have gone through, because I'm going to use it for good. And I literally, literally remember one day in my brain, I took all of my regrets, all of my discontents, and I wrapped them up. It's like I had a, uh, a piece of cloth and I wrapped them all up and I tied it. And I went to the cross of Jesus. I saw myself kneeling down. And I surrendered to God everything that I felt had damaged me. And I said, I'm going to thank you for this because you're a sovereign God. You're a loving father. And you've made a promise that you will use it for good. And I'm excited to see what you're going to do. And that was the beginning of my journey to understand that true contentment really comes from knowing who God is and entrusting our life to him. And you see, I do counsel people. And because of my experience of loneliness at times, of feeling depressed, uh, afraid, insecure, uh, God used that to help me understand other people. I don't look at someone and think, why are you like that? I understand. I can empathize and I can help them in how I overcame it through Christ and learn contentment. I like what you all shared, Ms. Diana, uh, Ms. Van, Kira. Uh, we all struggle with discontent, um, regardless of our social status, of our backgrounds, of our upbringing. Um, there is that discontent in, in our hearts or in our situation and as you were sharing i too <laughs> was thinking about the discontent i had too growing up um i was discontent with with the family situation I, I was i had a picture of what a family is and because it did not fit um, my idea of a family that really 
had a, a deep sense of discontent in my heart. Oh, I wish there was more of this. There was more of that. I think that's discontent when, when we only focus on what is wrong, we lose sight of what is good. Now that we've identified that we are discontent people, now we go to how do we overhaul our perspective? How did you reframe or recalibrate the discontent? or the circumstance in your life? Uh, Ellen, I w- I'd like to say that uh, my perspective changed when I first received Jesus. But the truth is, it took a long while for me to get to that point where I can be contented with the way I looked. No, uh, But the ver- there were verses that really helped me a lot. And one of these is in Psalm 139, 14 and 15, uh, I will give thanks to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. It, you know, it uh, made me realize that when God made me, uh, it was not, he, made, he didn't make a mistake and he put a lot of thought into it. So really, um, I should be thankful for what I have, no? Uh, for what I am, for how I look, because I'm normal in a lot of things. I can speak, I can, I can talk, uh, I can see, I can hear, I can walk, you know. So that's how I reframed it uh, to be thankful for all these things that I have right now. And uh, even even when, uh, let's say, I look at myself in the mirror and I see the in, uh, increasing wrinkles and an even skin tone as I grow older. And then, uh, you know, I have this temptation sometimes to, magpa, magpa belo kaya ako. <laughs> but then, you know, I change my mind whenever I think about the cost and I can use it for other unselfish purposes. And when I think... Uh, if I die today or I die tomorrow, that improvement in my looks won't do any good anyway because I will be cremated. Masusunog lang ako, di ba? So it's useless. So, and then one other Bible verse that really, really impacted me was uh, in First Peter 2.9. It talks about being a chosen race, that I am a royal priesthood. So I am, I am not only chosen, I am royalty. Because I am the daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that truly made me special. And it countered my, um, my initial uh, feelings of rejection, of being a wallflower, of not being chosen. Because uh, even though those, uh, those teenage guys before did not choose me, my father chose me. My heavenly father chose me. And to me, that's uh, very precious. And that chose me. <laughs> yes, man, for you, God knows the best. He doesn't give us inferior. You mentioned one thing that's very important. It wasn't an automatic thing that you became content. It was something that you had to learn. Just like what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4.11, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances. And you mentioned also how you framed it. Is you really went back a go to God's word to speak truth to, to those discontent dead thoughts and really um, bring light to what is true. So thank you, Ms. Bang. Let's hear from Kira. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> yes. Why is it every time my mom is speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm ready with my answers, but then when you call my name, <laughs> suddenly goes out the window. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bear with me. I have to say first that I had a complicated relationship mm-hmm. with this contentment and contentment because sometimes the way I recalibrated my thinking when I was younger, what's wrong? What do I mean? Um, I, I thought that I didn't have the beauty, but I, I said, oh, well, I have the brain. So again, I used pride to recalibrate my thinking <laughs> in, in, you know, fighting of this content. But the Lord showed me that it was wrong. So this is where it became clear to me that my quiet time with the Lord, with my my relationship with you, my intimacy with you was so important because um, one thing that I realized that I needed to do was to admit it, to share it with the Lord, to tell Him, Lord, this is, this is how I feel about myself. I remember writing in my own notebook like the, the things that I didn't like about myself and I as I was writing about my eyes, my nose, my hands, <laughs> I I was crying and I told the Lord, Lord, this is, this is how I 
feel about all of these things. But I remember your words that you said, I am fearfully and wonderfully me. And that made all the difference because I knew that he understand, he understood what I was feeling back then as I was writing those things, as I was pouring, pouring out my heart to him. I knew then that he loved me regardless of how I look and that he purposed me to look this way and that he has a purpose for me to do his will in this, in this world. So um, all of those realities has made me um, encourage me and help me find the, my confidence in Jesus Christ. And, and also, of course, um, I had to keep on praying because it's not really just a one-time deal. Like, you don't defeat this content once, but it's actually a daily struggle, more so for others like, like me. So what I do is just, I just pour it out to the Lord and then I try to think of the things that the Lord has blessed me with. So uh, let's say I find myself complaining about my hands. Well, I am so thankful that I have complete fingers, um, even though they don't look dainty or, you know, the candle-like fingers. I, I still can use them for work, for God's glory, to write for His glory. And I also thank Him for being born in a country where I can practice being a Christian. I mean, I mean no, not, not that much persecution unlike other countries. So discontent with where I live as well. <laughs> uh, I fight that with God's word. And I remember the things that he said in his word. This is where memorizing verses really helped me growing up. Like, godliness with contentment is great gain. For he brought nothing to the world and he can take anything out of it. So it's realizing that my days are numbered, that I'm going to die uh, and go to heaven with the Lord. What does it matter if I temporarily look this way on earth? So those things of uh, recalibrated my thinking, help me focus on the Lord. Um, long term, my my long term benefits of being with the Lord. <laughs> there. <laughs> I like what you shared, Kira, about um, before you used to list all of those things that you don't like about yourself <laughs> or the things that you're discontent about. But you re- reframe that now you you list down and you recount and you count and count and count all of the blessings even thanking god for the things that you're discontent about and um yes kira there's only one you um that's that's how god made us so all the ladies out here here on zoom and facebook there's only one you you are special you are chosen so um we can be thankful to god for that miss diana can we hear from you how do you reframe and recalibrate but i really love what edric said on sunday that contentment is circumstance neutral it's not it's not based upon circumstance but contentment is really based upon our perspective of things so example when i was younger I thought that maybe being a man would be more exciting. I thought being a woman, you know, I'm just going to take care of kids and keep house. And I thought I'd rather be a man because I can go out and work and, you know, travel and do all these great and mighty things. Uh, So that was one thought I had before I came to Christ. And not that I really lived that way, but I just was a thought, you know, like a little discontent with my unchangeable identity, you know, as a woman. And then I also thought, you know, I'd like to, I know my IQ, it's, it's high enough, but I thought I'd really like to be super intelligent so that people, when they talk with me, would be so impressed. And so where did this all come from? It was pride. I really wanted to be worshipped. I think we don't realize it, but we want to be worshipped. We want to be, people be in awe of us. Because, yeah, I traveled a lot, and I always had to make new friends, so I wanted to be so impressive. But when I came to Christ, you know, the Bible says that for by, by God's grace, you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not a result of works that no one can boast. <clears throat> so first of all, when I truly embraced Jesus, and I realized that by God's grace, he loved me, and he saved me, and it's what you girls were saying. He's given us eternal life, and he's made us his daughter, and we have an amazing future. <clears throat> the verse that really helped me was the next one. After coming to Christ, he says, what you guys, girls said is, for we are his workmanship. That word workmanship means that we are his poem, his masterpiece. We're one of a kind. There's no one else like us created in Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared in advance for us to do. So we are unique. And what God told me, Diana, you have all the intelligence that you need to do my will, to honor and glorify me. You don't have to be the most intelligent. It's not you that you want to glorify. It's me that should be glorified. 
And then he said, you are fully equipped, you know, to do my will, to carry out my plans with the gifts and abilities I've given to you. So I would say if you're into cars, we're fully loaded. We have all of the, everything we need and we have the accessories. So really it was recalibrating to live my life, not for my glory, but for God's glory. And uh, the Bible says he's given me everything for life and godliness. This is in uh, First Peter uh, he's, um, and he's fully equipped us. So it really made me be at rest and be happy and thankful with what God, how God has made me and how he's going to use me to glorify him with what he's given to me. So uh, we've been talking about reframing and recalibrating. Now we go to the next O. So be aware, um, overhaul your perspective. And the next one is overcome through Christ. And uh, I think you've already touched on this somehow in your responses, but how can we really overcome discontent through Christ? Uh, Ms. Bang. Oh, you know what? One thing I realize uh, how important it is to overcome the sin of discontent is because uh, there are other sins attached to it. Uh, it actually gives birth to other sins. When I was discontented with my looks, I remember uh, back in high school, I used to use mertiolate on my cheeks to make it like a blush on. <laughs> Because <laughs> we cannot afford a blush on, so I use whatever we had in the house. So I lived with this lie in my teenage years. And aside from lying, there was the sin of envy, jealousy, resentment, bitterness. And so it's so very important for me to be able to overcome these feelings through Christ. No, It's really going back to the Word of God. No, I remember how much he loves me and how he sees me. He sees me as beautiful, unique, special, precious as a gem. And he, he, he loved me so much, he, he saved me and gave me the greatest gift of all. And he provided me with everything I need to live a life of meaning and purpose. He is actually sufficient for me. And one of the verses that uh, I always remember is in Ephesians 3 to 4, where it talks about he has uh, blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So uh, just the thought that I am chosen by the Lord uh, helps me overcome these feelings of discontent. Yes, thank you, uh, Ms. Bang. Uh, I was just going through the comments also here on our Facebook feed, and some have also been sharing their own insights to our discussion. Let me just read one from I Hope. This webinar is very essential to me now, especially with discontentment. When I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and King of my life, my life dramatically changed, and I realized and keep on realizing that my relationship with the Lord is enough and everything else is just a bonus. I always have this one statement in my head whenever I start being this uh, It's all about Jesus. Everything is just crazy. So, so you know, in a meal, like, I'm just going to use meals, right? Like, uh, um, chicken. <laughs> um, what's more important, chicken or the gravy? Of course, the chicken. So it's the same in my life. I'm not comparing Jesus to chicken, but you know, it's most the most important part of my life. But when I remember my relationship, my faith in Christ is the most important part of my life, then it becomes, quote, quote unquote, easier for me to fight this content because my eyes are focused on Jesus. So my relationship, my intimacy with him is crucial in really overcoming, you know, the temptation to be discontent. When I feel like I, I want to complain. This is so funny because earlier, before we started this uh, webinar, webinar, I was looking at your background. <laughs> I was also looking at my background and I said, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I have a nice room, but then I started to think, why, why can't I have a nice room? white colored room <laughs> like a nice background for me to use without any green screen <laughs> so I I, I I was feeling that way and then God made me realize well Kira um you're going to serve me and then your heart is not right <laughs> be thankful for uh what I have given you and then I realized yes uh, I'm so thankful that the Lord has given me uh, a house to live in uh, a room of my own not everybody has that but most importantly, 
really realized that he has provided for me from the beginning of Zion and even now, he will continue to do so. So remembering my skating rights, my focus should, that my focus should be on him really helps to overcome the fatigue. Also, my mom's example to me growing up, when she shares uh, her own struggles with discontentment, even at this age, and what she experienced before, and that really helped me know I am not alone, and and through her example on how she, you know, faced those uh, things, the, the, faced her struggles with this one really also helped me know what to do. So just what to say. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Kira? I, I like what you said about fixing your eyes on Jesus. I like what you said also about um, having someone like your mom. To, to, to be a good model to you. And I just want to share, because Miss Diana to me is, is really a good model of, of contentment. Um, there was a time when uh, my husband was needed uh, medicine or he needed treatment for something. And I was really anxious. And then Miss Diana reminded me that the Lord is in control. The Lord knows. But maybe he doesn't need that medication right now. He doesn't need that treatment right now. And that really gave me, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because God knows what is best. And you know what? That gave me peace also. I don't know if it's related to discontentment, but it's just um, being dependent, I think. Um, having that dependence and trust in the Lord's sovereignty and control over our lives, we can have that perspective. If there's something that we don't have right now, it's because we really don't need it in our lives. You know, Christ is is really what we long for. And the Bible actually says, keep your life free from the love of money. Hmm. Be content with what you have. I think this is something that Paul said, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am in. I'm in, in, I'm in. You know, I can get along with much or little. He said, the secret is I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And you mentioned dependence because the Bible says that when we have Christ, we have, we've been made complete. We don't understand it, but only when things are stripped away that we can see that, hey, I have Jesus, I'm complete. And ladies, of those who are wanting this and wanting that and you're not happy, you know, this is a te- this is temporary. Our life on earth is temporal. And we're going to leave it all behind. Uh, you know, when Job lost everything, he fell on his knees and he worshipped. Are you worshipping God now in this circumstance? And he said, naked, I came into this world. And naked I will leave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I think that the way we can overcome discontentment is to really understand that Jesus said, I'm with you. Don't be afraid. I'll take care of you. I will supply all your needs. He made a commitment. If you don't have it, yes, Ellen, you don't need it right now. He knows when to supply it because he's committed to that. So for me, the secret is really saying it's no longer I, but Christ. When you do that, it's not about how much others have and you don't have. You can actually rejoice in the fact that God has blessed them. You can be then you can enjoy their blessing because you're rejoicing in it. You're happy for them. So I think that what gets us into trouble is comparison. You know, looking at life as a glass half empty and forgetting to say, Lord, I think I love what you said, Kira. You know, the hands that you did in life are the hands that you write with. You know, then, you know, when you take everything and you, you give it to the Lord, then he uses it for his glory, not our glory. And somehow we get out of the way. You know, if someone is just so beautiful, it's a distraction. You know, if a, if a person is, you know, we're a frame, you don't want people to focus on the frame. You want them to focus on the picture. And we should have a, be a frame that's going to frame the beauty of Christ. And that should be what people see in us. Not external beauty, but more internal beauty of Christ in us. So it's no longer I, but it's all about Christ to glorify Him. Praise God, Miss Diana. <laughs> Praise God for all of your answers. I just want to, you know, we have a lot of engagement happening on Facebook and in Zoom. I just want to read um, from our sister Marine. She said, We are selfish by nature, so we have insecurity and discontent. In Ecclesiastes, there is a void in our heart that only God can fill up. We are precious in God's eyes. Jesus is enough. Hallelujah. 
Also, in, in the message from uh, by Edric, he said, when Jesus is our soul satisfaction, we will have our true satisfaction in our soul. So we, we have become aware. We have um, overhaul our perspective, overcome through Christ. Now we go to the M, make it holy. So um, there is a holy discontent that... Um, God has also placed in our hearts. Um, I think that is what we should uh, pursue. So uh, how can we better pursue a holy discontent? Because the discontent that we've been talking about is all about us, 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 what I don't have, what I want to have. But what is this holy discontent? Uh, Ellen, before I answer the question, let me just clarify something. I think I, I failed to mention a while ago about uh, when I use martiolate on my cheeks, I said I live with that lie. It's because I was telling people that it's uh, no, uh, natural. Raise <laughs> <laughs> cheeks for baggy girls. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, you're, we're talking about uh, holy discontent, right? Yes. Uh, as Tita Diona said a while ago, no, uh, it's important thing is to really die to self. And that's what I'm trying to practice, uh, to take away myself from the equation, die to myself, and focus on what is eternal. And it starts with my intimacy with the Lord. Uh, not to be satisfied with where, with where I am now in my relationship with God, but to keep growing in my desire in my hunger and thirst for him. Uh, I want to fall in love with him every day. No? And then I would like to also extend this to others by discipling the women that he has entrusted to me to draw, draw them closer to God, not to me. No? And to faithfully do my assignment for as long as they are in my care. And then uh, when it's time for them to be passed on to somebody, then at least I can tell the Lord that I have done my part. And of course, um, one other thing uh, is that to cultivate that feeling of compassion that Jesus had has for the lost, no, uh, by uh, sharing the gospel, especially to the people who still do not know Jesus and those in my uh, sphere of influence. So uh, that's my answer. Uh, you know how horses wear blinders, so that you know blinders, so that they're not distracted when they you know go for. When the driver <laughs> yes. takes the courage out, right? I actually go to practice even more wearing blinders for Jesus. So that means I am only focused on what's in front of me and who is that? That's Jesus. So basically, if I do that, I will be pursuing holy discontent because I know that I won't be complacent. Like, for example, it can come as a temptation to say, oh, I've already discipled this number of people, this number of ladies, so I don't need to disciple even more. I don't need to share the gospel anymore because I'm already handling my own big group. No. So practicing holy, pursuing holy discontent means right now is really just um, uh, looking to the Lord and making sure that I am not satisfied, quote-unquote, satisfied, with just doing the bare minimum for the Lord, but to do my best, give more and more for the Lord. And and I, I will do that, and I can do that by what I said earlier, <laughs> focusing on the Lord. And like what mommy said, um, by, by, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I, I just blanked it's out. Okay. <laughs> it happens. When <laughs> <laughs> my mom said a while ago that I sh we should just, um, Mom, can you please mention what you said earlier about focusing? Growing in my intimacy? <laughs> yes, yes. There And the compassion. Yes. Compassion, compassion for the loss. For the loss. Because mm -hmm. when I do that, I'll be pursuing holy discontent. <laughs> there. I'm Thank sorry. you, Kira. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, Ms. Diana. I think that uh, part of the holy discontent that Edward was talking about is that God says he does not want any to perish but all to come to the knowledge of the truth because Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Understanding God's heart that the Bible says it's only when the, whole, the gospel has gone to the whole world that Jesus will come again. So God's, if you would say it, his holy discontent is that he wants everyone to be saved so they're not yet saved. So we have a lot to do, you know, to really help them to come to know Jesus. Because you mentioned it, that 
you'll be there to really be sharing the gospel, helping them. You know, the Bible says, uh, Paul said in um, Acts 20, 35, in all things I have shown you that by working hard, in this way we must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You know, we want to accumulate all these things. You know, that's what, it's the more mentality. I want more and more and more. But it's not bad that if God will give us more, but it should not be uh, a dead sea. In our, we should be able to pass it on. And what has he given us? An amazing spiritual heritage, which is more important than any possessions. And it's our responsibility to understand the heart of God and to keep on sharing the gospel at every opportunity, doing our best for Jesus here. I love it. You know, do your best. We don't just do minimum. But as you have received, it's more blessed to give what is what, of eternal value. So we're so concerned about people right now who have COVID and they might die. Of course, humanly speaking, that's, that's very sad. But the greater sadness is that they die without Christ. So we have now been work to do to fulfill the great commission to go and tell the gospel to every creature in all nations before Jesus can come again. So that to me is holy discontent. Sometimes I don't feel like it. I'm tired. And Jesus just reminds me, well, if you don't share with them, they're going to hell right now. And I think, oh yeah, okay, again, let us share. So you have to remember the heart of God. He doesn't want anyone to perish. So ladies, who is in your life today that doesn't know the Lord God? Jesus loves them. He doesn't want them to perish. He wants them to have everlasting eternal life. And for those who have not accepted Jesus right now as your Lord and Savior, it's simply a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. I know I'm a sinner and that I can't save myself. But thank you that you died on the cross to pay for all my sins. Today, I open my heart to you. I trust in you today to be my Savior, to be my Lord. I accept your forgiveness and I accept your free gift of eternal life. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Jesus paid. So the price for eternal life has been paid, but the free gift of God is eternal life. You can have that gift today. Just say yes to Jesus and then commit to follow him by the power of the spirit all the days of your life. And that is true contentment. You now have Jesus who fills in that void in us. This Mary has shared so well. Mary May said so well, we long for God. That's the vacuum that we're looking for to be filled. And he fills it. We're complete in Christ. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's a wrap for our Women to Women webinar in. Now we are pursuing contentment. And what did we learn? True contentment comes from accepting Christ and having faith in Him. And we will have everything that we need because Christ is sufficient. His promises are enough. And so today, ladies, let us seek God. Seek Him in His Word, His presence, in prayer, and most of all, in thanksgiving, not only for the good things, even for the trials, even for the seemingly bad things, because He is using it, and He's causing it for good. So uh, we learn from Psalm 34.10, those who seek the Lord will lack no good thing. So ladies, we hope that you were encouraged today. If you are dealing with some toxic emotions, you need help, prayers, someone to talk to, we have Life on the Line online counseling. It's a free online counseling service that CCF is offering. Just uh, look at this slide. We have the link there, uh, bit.ly slash CCF online counseling. We invite you to join a small group. If you aren't part of a small group yet, we, we invite you to join a small group where you can grow in your knowledge, in your faith, in Jesus Christ, and be accountable. And we also have a chance to encourage other women too. And now we invite you all women to carry on with this conversation about destroying discontent in your respective families, in your small group. This is a great conversation starter. Also bonding time with your family. That will be all for today. We hope to see you again next week. We have another webinar coming up. God bless. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.